an Arab and a Jew walk into an escape room. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a joke. What do they feel? Fear? Negative stereotypes? Mistrust? Conflict? Probably. But what do they have actually in common? Quite a lot. They won't be able to escape from imprisonment unless they interact, cooperate, and figure together a way out. This is exactly what we do. We bring people living in a conflict zone together through an online gameplay, putting aside fear, negative stereotypes, and mistrust, and communicating, collaborating, and even becoming friends. However, conflicts are not exclusive to our region. Conflicts are everywhere. Conflicts are awful. They affect the quality of life in every society and city involved. Living in a conflict zone and being a father, I've been restless, concerned, and worried for many years. Some of you share the same concerns, worries, and maybe attempts to figure out ways to bring some good to our future. Many have tried different programs, yet many have failed. You probably experienced, for example, some Arab-Jewish dialogue programs conducted at schools. Honestly, none of them really work. Make a change or create true friendships. I felt we don't have a privilege to sit aside. None of us has. And we cannot wait for politicians to bring any good to our region. We cannot wait and we should not wait. Being a father, I learn a lot <laughs> from my kids, my nephews, my family. A while ago, I had an amazing observation. I've noticed my kid, my son, and my nephews having a loud phone conversation while playing on their iPads. I've realized that they were aligning moves with relatives abroad while playing an online video game with them. This made me wonder. Young people are passionate about screens and video games. They play, they interact, they enjoy, sometimes they fight, but unlike most adults, they recover, forgive, and go back to play very fast. And they are not fixed yet with negative stereotypes or perceptions. If online video games can bring people together, what if we utilize them to get people to play, interact, and become friends, even in conflict zones? Eureka! <laughs> Young gamers are damn too good. They are great problem solvers. They strive to become the best version of themselves seeking a heroic win to somehow and some extent save the world while playing. If young gamers are damn too good in solving problems in a virtual world, are they capable of solving real problems in the real life? This led me to meet Uri and Dodi, who share the same thoughts and desires to utilize the language young people love want and deserve online video games. Together, we founded Games for Peace. Now, the, the idea of utilizing online video games to address some of the urgent issues wasn't really new. In fact, many have tried to pursue this idea by developing some designated games aiming at dialogue, conflict resolution, and peace promotion. Maybe you've heard of such games. These games could be great as, as an experiment, but none of them is actually famous, scalable, or even popular. 
instead of developing designated games, we are exploiting the great appeal of mass popular online video games. Minecraft. Minecraft is a great environment, a game where communication, collaboration, and creativity are prized. It's popular, and young people are addicted to it. Did you know that over 40 million gamers play Minecraft every month? Minecraft has today over 100 million users around the world. If they all go live to play together, that would make them one of the largest countries in the world. Together with our developers, we took Minecraft and changed its settings to meet our needs. We created a new look and feel, a new gameplay, and gave players more features without imposing any agenda. Remember the escape room? This is how our gameplay begins. Our gameplay requires players to talk, to collaborate, to align moves, to become allies. Can you imagine young people from all across the Middle East coming to play Minecraft together? We did it. It was very exciting to see young gamers from Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, and Iran, yes, Iran, coming to play Minecraft together. Teenagers came to play, came to do what they like most, to play games they love. And they came back to play again and again and inspired more gamers to join. For them, it's Minecraft. For us, it's a radical new way of bridging the gaps between different sectors in a conflict zone. Now, you're probably wondering if each one comes from a different country, how did they manage to communicate? Well, technology is not an issue. We've managed to embed an instant translation chat engine into our game, so everyone enjoys playing without any lingual barriers. Amazingly, social media was great in spreading our message, and our program was embraced by young gamers in Georgia and Abkhazia, and it was also conducted between Spanish and Basque gamers at the Basque Museum. Look at them. Isn't it great to enjoy a game you love and, at the same time, break down historical walls of hate and mistrust, giving peace a real chance? Today, our program is running at schools in Israel, bringing young Arabs and Jews to play Minecraft together and to get to know each other better. They play online and after several sessions, they meet offline, face to face, and they enjoy it a lot. <laughs> the program is so appealing that teachers are asking us to participate and have their own gameplay. <laughs> We're speaking of a real measurable change in real time and in the real world. We see more positive thoughts of the others, an increase in the readiness to engage with the others, and the potential for good is incredible. So, if you want a more comfortable present and a better future, I bet you all want a better future, we need to start investing in young people, learn from them, listen to them, interact with them. Young generations can teach us, us, how to break down barriers, how to accept the others around, how to build peace. What will happen if we trap together an American, a North Korean, an Afghani, 
and the Russian all in one escape room? Can online games make a difference? Let's see. Let's play. Thank you. Thank you.